yesterday morning they let me know you were gone I've seen fire and I've seen rain I've seen sunny days that I thought would never end I've seen lonely times when I could not find a friend Sweet dreams and flying machines and pieces on the ground Oh, I've seen fire and I've seen rain Thought I'd see you, fire and rain. Oh, fire and rain. Hello there, welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with another Pen Resurrection Sunday video. And this one is very special indeed. This is a 1947 Parker 51 Demi Vacumatic in Cordovan Brown with a Lustreloy cap. 1947 was the first year that Parker made a Demi size 51, and that does make this pen special, but this is more special, er, uh, specialer, more special, more specialer, you know what I mean. A pen is just a pen, and some pens are unique and beautiful and collectible, but what really makes a pen special is when it is imbued with a personal story or history, like this 1947 Schaefer Tuckaway. It's a collectible pen and very interesting, but because it belonged to Wynne's fourth grade teacher, Charlotte, who was like a second mother to her and who bequeathed it to her just before she passed at the age of 105, this pen has sentimental value that exceeds its intrinsic value, making it priceless. I had it professionally restored and it keeps the memory of her beloved Charlotte close to her when she writes with it daily. Or this 1954 Parker 51 fountain pen pencil and ballpoint jotter set. It's a lovely set in the original box, but it's priceless for my friend Ronnie, who treasures it in the memory of his late fountain pen loving father, Dennis. And this 1947 Parker 51 Demi Vacumatic began as something interesting to me as I was interested in restoring it. This story is getting longer by the moment, so feel free to skip ahead to the restoration. But I think these human stories of people and their beloved writing instruments are inspirational, and one of the reasons I do this. So you're going to have to bear with me. After my friend Ronnie was gifted a gorgeous Leonardo Memento Zero on his special birthday, and you can see that pen review by clicking right here, Ron sent me a note that he received from one of his good friends. Beverly lives in Victoria in the exquisitely beautiful Ross Bay area. For a number of years, she rented her Century Cottage on the bay to my friends Ron and Lynn for short periods, and they in turn invited Wynne and I to stay with them on occasion. We have fond memories of that idyllic location, and I have several photos of the area. Beverly has become a lifelong friend to Ron and Lynn, and wrote to Ron about his fountain pen birthday present. Ron has given me permission to read part of this letter to you, and this is what she said. Judith told me, Ron, you had just had a birthday and received a special fountain pen as a gift. When I was leaving my job in New Zealand to go on my first adventure to Australia, my boss gave me a Parker 51 fountain pen as a going away present. It had a gold cap and gold nib, and the bladder had to be filled from an ink bottle. I treasured that pen. Sadly, nine years later, when I was living and working in London, I was an employee of an upmarket department store in Chelsea. Each week, we had to go to the pay office to sign for our pay, which was then given to us in a small brown envelope. In my lunch break, I dashed across to the post office to deposit my wages in my savings account. I left my pen behind in the cubicle where I was filling out my slip. I dashed back as soon as I noticed it was missing, hoping someone had handed it in, but no, it was lost. I've never owned a decent fountain pen since then, but now my curse of writing is very childish, as I've printed all my correspondence since I was 18 years old, so I don't feel deserving of a fine pen. Judah still has pleasant handwriting. So sad for most people it has become a lost art and some of the younger generation may have difficulty even reading it. Ron told me he wanted to get her a pen and asked me for suggestions. I was right in the middle of restoring this Parker 51 Demi and I thought it was fate that Beverly should receive this pen from Ron, Lynn, Wynne and myself as a small token of our appreciation for sharing her lovely Victoria home with us on so many occasions. Thank you for staying with me through this long introduction, but I think this story is more important than even the restoration of this pen. But let's take a look at what it looked like when I got it and how it looks now as we gift it to Beverly. Thank you, Beverly. This one's for you. 
right now. And here is the 1947 Parker 51 Demi Vacumatic in Cordovan Brown. Let's take a look at what it looked like when I won it on an auction on eBay. This is an eBay auction that I won. This is a 1948 Parker 51 Vacumatic. Looks like it's in pretty good shape. Let's see whether I can find out what year it is. The camera is better than my eyes. It's a 1947 with one dot. So that means it's the third quarter of 1947. And it's crunchy. So, another opportunity for Doug to resurrect a vintage vacuumatic. But uh, this is in that cocoa brown, which is really, really nice. And we'll have to see what kind of nib that might end up being. It looks like it's got some pretty good tipping material on that, but I expect it's a fine. Most of them are. We will see. Wow, I'm excited. And this is what it looks like after restoration. I'm going to show you a time lapse of how I restored this pen and then talk about its history, show some size comparisons, and then do a writing sample. So I'm currently working on the Parker 51 Demi and I've pushed the new sack that I've just received from the Pen Dragons uh, into the, the cup. And this is a really handy tool, uh, which is a pellet pusher from the Pen Dragons. And the good thing is that the diameter of it actually fits inside that sack for the Parker 51. And so you can push it in after you've attached the pellet to the cup and then talc this and then roll it back on itself. Now I've already cut this to 29 millimeters in length. So now I'm just gonna add a little bit of talc to that sack so it'll slide on itself. It's kind of like bacon bread. There we are. Now we're gonna roll this sack back. And the sack came back. I'm gonna roll it back just like that on itself. There we go. Takes a bit to get it going. There we go. And there, now it's right up against that rim, that aluminum piece. And we can see how it works by pushing the spring and that will create a suction inside the pen. Now all we have to do is install this. I put it back on the installation tool to give it some leverage so I could crank it down. There we take that off. That should be nice and tight. There. There you can see it working. Works great. Now we just got to put the pen back together again. And I put a little masking tape around the end of a q-tip which I pulled the the bud off of and it fits nicely into that gap of the Parker 51 nib and that makes it a little bit easier to polish. It's coming up very nice and gleaming 1947. There, now the nib is cleaned up. So now it's all nice and clean. Gonna put it back in the barrel. Put the clutch collar on and we'll find out how that nib aligns so it needs to turn about 45 degrees to the left and just a tiny bit more just a touch and there we go that feed does look like it needs to go in further though since i'm going to have this nib in and out i made a couple of scores in where that channel is on the bottom of the the collector unit on the collar so that i can line it up perfectly in the future there i adjusted the feed and then i can line up those grooves just like that and it should go on perfectly and it does that's more like it 
and there we go now all we have to do is ink it up and tune that nib and then give it a final polish And here we go with the first test. This is a Parker 51 Demi. And it has what it feels like a fine or an extra fine 14 karat gold nib. Seems to have lots of flow. Oh yeah, it's very wet. And it has a bit of scratch. Just a bit. Back and forth. Wow, <laughs> that's really nice. Yeah, it's going to need some tuning this way, but a little bit of tuning, and I bet when I do the writing sample, it'll be fine. That's a really interesting small size, demi size, Parker 51 from 1947. There we go. When I won this on an auction on eBay, I didn't even realize it was a demi-sized Parker 51. It's really difficult to tell scale in photos. The Parker 51 is arguably the most successful fountain pen in history. Launched just after the Second World War began for the US in 1941, Parker continued to make them until 1972 and sold close to 50 million of them. The first 51s were vacuumatics. Parker changed to the new filling system with the Aerometric in 1948. Here is Dennis's 1954 Parker 51 Aerometric. You can see how much larger the barrel is on the standard Parker 51. Parker introduced the demi size in 1947 just as they were transitioning to the Aerometric filler. So this 1947 Demi with a vacuumatic filler and the new non-blue diamond clip is from a very narrow timeline in the 51's evolution. The Demi is identical to the standard vacuumatic but with a shorter barrel and cap. Here is a standard size 51 vacuumatic from 1948 and you can see the difference. The forward part of the pen, the section, the nib, the feed, the collector and the clutch ring are all identical parts as is the vacuumatic filling unit. But here are the two caps and you can see the one on the right from 1948 is a longer cap, standard size, and the Demi from 1947 is shorter. Interestingly, the 1948 has the older style blue diamond clip whereas the 1947 Demi has the new style Parker Aero Clip. Let's take a closer look at this pen. From the top we see the classic gray pearl plastic jewel embedded in the clip ring. New to the 51 in 1947, this Parker Aero Clip wasn't new to Parker as they had used it previously in the Parker Vacuumatic models from 1933 to 1938. The chrome metal cap is what Parker called Lusterloy and it tapers to a groove and has Parker engraved on the front. The plastic barrel continues straight until here where it tapers to the rounded end of the blind cap which unscrews to reveal the vacuumatic pump rod. This seam was actually almost invisible when the pen was new but with the sanding, buffing and polishing I did to restore the pen it's become more pronounced and visible. The cap slips off with one of the most wonderful slip cap mechanisms ever made for a fountain pen. There's an inner cap sleeve that engages with the clutch ring that separates the barrel from the long tapering plastic section. And there is the 14 karat gold hooded nib and black ebonite feed. This is the innovation that the Parker 51 is famous for. Hiding the nib and ink collector inside the section keeps the pen from drying out when it is capped or uncapped. Marvelous design. The cap posts deeply and securely, making it one of the best posting fountain pens in history. I think the Parker 45 is a bit better than this, but this pen set the standard. Beautifully balanced and elegant in the hand. No wonder they made 50 million of them. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the 1947 Parker 51 Demi Vacuumatic with a modern Pilot E95S, a 1948 standard size Parker 51, a 1937 Schaefer Balance, and a 1931 Parker Dual Fold junior. I find it interesting that the 1948 has the old style blue diamond clip but the 1947 Demi has the new style Parker Arrow clip. It shows how transitional the 1947-48 year was for Parker. 
they were using up their stock of old style clips. The blue diamond was the symbol of the Parker lifetime warranty. A 1947 Supreme Court case in the United States ruled that a company couldn't offer a lifetime warranty that charged a service fee. A lifetime warranty is supposed to be just that, a lifetime warranty that's free. So all companies got rid of their mark that indicated a lifetime warranty Parker with the blue diamond and Schaefer with the white dot. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. Where you can write with a standard Parker 51 unposted. And maybe even the Parker Duofold Jr. The E95S from Pilot is not designed to be used unposted. And the Demi is very tiny as you can see. Almost the size of the unposted E95S. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper. And this is the 1947 Parker 51 Vacuumatic Demi. And it has a 14 karat gold fine nib. It's very smooth for a fine nib. And it's nicely wet as well. And the ink today is the only ink I put in a vintage pen with a sack. Waterman's. Serenity Blue. And there is no line variation on these nibs at all. That's not what they're designed to do. They give you a fairly standard uniform line. And this one makes a 0 0.4 millimeter line, which makes it a Western fine or a Japanese fine to medium. And for our quote, And for some reverse writing, it's a little bit drier, a little bit drier, and tiny bit thinner, but very smooth indeed. And some quick writing. Yeah, no issues whatsoever. This feed keeps up nicely, nicely wet pen. So what are my thoughts about this restoration? This was a very pleasant restoration indeed. I sent away to the UK for vacuumatic sacks and worked on restoring the caps and barrels on both these Parker 51s while I was waiting the six weeks for the sacks to arrive. In the meantime, Ron shared his correspondence with Beverly just as the parts arrived and we made the decision to gift this pen. When I successfully resacked the pen and got it to write and write beautifully, the knowledge that Beverly will be surprised and thrilled with this pen just made the whole project that much sweeter. Thanks go out to Ron for sharing Beverly's story with me and suggesting the gift of the pen. And thanks go out to Beverly for sharing her lovely home with us so many times. We have lots of fond memories of Roth Bay. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And please look in the description for a link to Goldspot Pens as I'm now an affiliate of the online store. And when you shop at Goldspot using my link, you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you. You can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. this.